Welcome to the third class of this fresh start in 3D modeling with special focus on products. In previous classes, here's what we have covered. In class 1, we learned some fundamentals about 3D design. We went through the Cinema 4D interface. We learned some important modeling tools and we understood how subdivisions work. In class 2, we learned how to model 3D products, starting with cylinders as our primitives. We also practiced by modeling 4 different products with their detailed covers. In this class, we'll learn how to create holes and extrude new shapes from an existing mesh. There are several ways you can take part in this series and also support the series and the channel at large. First, you can kindly subscribe to the channel to get more classes and to get notified for subsequent series and 3D content. And you can also join my 3D community on Telegram for more conversations, tips, challenges, resource sharing and growth opportunities. Then you can also grab the fresh start bundle of clay image references. It consists of over 25 clay product references to help you practice and model more products after you take part in this training. Also, if you're into NFTs, you can patronize my Vogbot NFT project on OpenSea that has a crazy utility where I create a free animated fashion NFT for every piece sold. So first, let's use this mesh to demonstrate this. So if I just wanted to create a circular detail in these areas and in the most basic form, what I can simply do is select these two polygons. I hit I to extrude the faces inwards. And I'll just extrude the faces by holding control and dragging it inside. So with this shape, if I subdivide this object, I hold Alt and then select the subdivision surface. This is what you should see. So if I want to keep affecting the shape of this detail here, I can make a loop selection at this point. I'll hit UL to make a loop selection and I'll hold Shift to add the selection to the former. So if I put on my subdivision surface and I take my scale tool, I'll just deselect this for now. So if I begin to scale this on the Y axis, you can see how the detail will form. And if I also scale this on the Z axis here, you see how this forms. So if this is the type of basic detail I need, I can just stop here. So we can also create details by beveling some points. So let's demonstrate that with this point here. So I'll select this point and I'll hit M and S on my keyboard to bring my bevel tool up or I can right click to select bevel over here. Then with real time update checked, I'll just make a bevel first. Then I can come to my options here to make some adjustments. So if I add a subdivision to this bevel, you see how this forms. So this depth, I can change the shape of this bevel. So let's leave this as 100%. So once you've done something like this, the next thing to do will be to connect these edges properly. So our topology will flow better. So I'll bring my line cut tool, M and K. And I'll cut from this point to this point. Then I'll hit escape. And I'll cut from this point to this point. Hit escape and then I'll cut for the others. So after doing this, you can go to your polygon mode and you can now select these faces. Then we can hit I to extrude this inwards and then we can now extrude this. So if we add a subdivision surface to this, this is how this will look. We can smoothen this up by increasing the levels here. We can also create a perfect circle by beveling points. So I'll disable the subdivision surface for now. Then I'll select this point. So let's do the same thing. I'll hit M and S to bring my bevel tool. Then I'll apply my own bevel. Then I'll come here and add subdivision and I'll leave this at 1. Then in the depth here, I'll set this to minus 100%. So once you do this, this will form a surface that will give you a perfect circle when subdivided. So let's go ahead to join these points. So I'll bring my line cut tool, M and K, and I'll join these points. Then we can select these polygons here. I'll extrude it inwards on the surface and also extrude it this way. So if we put our subdivision surface back on, here's what we should have, a perfect circle here. So the role of the boolean tool is to create some sort of relationship between two objects where they meet. One object can either create a hole on the other object, that object can also be joined to the other object, and that object can also mark an intersection with the other object. So for this, you always need your main object and then the object that we want to use to create the hole or detail we want. So here, we want to create a circular detail. And since we're not trying to subdivide this mesh later on, we will not use lower segments. So we'll increase the segment of this particular cylinder. Then I'll drag the cylinder and place it to intersect with this object. So to create this Boolean relationship, let's bring the Boolean tool. So I'll go over here and then under these options, I'll select this bool. So I'll first drag the object that I want to use to create the detail inside the bool. 
then I'll drag this cube above that object inside the bool. So as you can see, this creates a circular detail and also connects all the points here to this single point. So if I keep increasing the segments of my cylinder, you see that those points will keep increasing also. And I can also move the cylinder to create more depth if I want. So with the bool tool selected, we can also make some settings. So if you want to hide these edges from our viewport, you can come over here and click hide new edges. And you see those edges will disappear from our viewport. Then you can check create single object. And what will happen is when we finally make this bool editable, this will become one object instead of separating these areas. Then we can also check select intersections. So when we also make the bool editable, it will select the areas that have intersected with this cube. Now we can change the boolean type here. So currently it's A subtract B. We can change the rule here and say A union B. And that will just join this cube and this cylinder. So if you go into the cube, you see that it creates this hole here. And if we change this to A intersect B, now only pick the areas that the cylinder has intersected with the cube. And if we select A without B, it will totally delete the cylinder, but just leave a hole where it intersected with the cube. So now we can come over here and make this bool editable. So I'll hit C on my keyboard. So as you can see, this has created a single object for us here. So if you add the subdivision surface to this object, it will become a mess because the points are not flowing properly. So let's try that. If I just add the subdivision surface, you can see how weird this looks. So this technique of modeling is not built with the mindset of subdividing later. So if we wanted to create our rounded edges here, we can always use a bevel tool. So if I go to my edge mode, you can see this area is already selected because of the options we selected earlier. And I can also add this loop selection here. Then I'll just hit M and S to bring my bevel tool. So if I add the bevel here this way, then I can add subdivisions to make that smooth. So if I go to my model mode, I'll just change this to solid shading. This is what we should have here. So the last technique I'll be showing you is how to use a boolean tool in a way that it still flow properly with our mesh and we can also subdivide. So we'll use the cylinder as an example. So say I wanted to create a circular detail around this area here. We may not be able to use any of the techniques I've used before. So the technique is to identify or sort of create a box around the area you want to place this bull. So I'll take this cylinder and I'll just place it around the area I want to bull. So I'll go to my main object here, go to my edge mode. So I'll use my loop cut to make a cut here and also make a cut at the base. So this way I can identify this box around here as where I want to create my detail. And that will always help you every time. So after doing this, I'll add a loop cut at the center. So to make sure this is at the center, I can change the offset here to 50% once I make the cut. I want to make sure the segment on this particular cylinder that I'll be using to create the detail matches the number of points within our box here. So remember, this is the imaginary box that we are working with. So to count this, you can start from this edge here. So I'll count this as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. And that's it. So this simply means we'll set this cylinder to 8 segments. And once we bull it, we'll be able to match the points to every edge here. So let's go ahead to bull this object. So I'll just drag this object inwards this way. Then I'll add my bull tool here. So I'll drag this first cylinder in first. And then I'll drag the second one to place this on top. So this is what I'll get at first. So let's go to our bool. And here let's change this to A without B. So we we'll only have the hole here. Then we'll check create single object and check hide new edges. So let's make this bool editable. I'll hit C on my keyboard. Then I can just drag the cylinder outwards this way. So if I go to my point mode. So the next thing we need to do is to join these points that are misplaced to the exact point of the cylinder. So make sure you're not joining these points of the cylinder we just built to the one of the mesh. So you can always trace that by using the edge here. So let's start from here. I'll use my polygon pen tool to merge these points. So if I hit M and E, it will bring my polygon pen tool. So I'll select the point that comes from this edge, which is the one that comes from the mesh. I'll just click and drag it and join it to this point here. Then I'll also do that here. Click and drag and join it to this point. Then I'll do that here also. Do that here. Then I'll do that for the others here. So for these other points here, I can just select them and delete them as we don't need them for anything. So I'll go to my edge mode. 
and then I'll hit U and L to bring my loop selection to. Then here, let's select boundary loop. So that will enable us to select this loop perfectly. Then I will check that. So you can hit D on your keyboard to bring your extrude to. Then we can just extrude these edges this way. So now if I add a subdivision surface, this is what we should have. Thank you for joining this class. In our next class, we'll learn how to model a complete kettle by applying lessons we've learned from our previous classes. So ensure you subscribe and remember you can support this initiative by grabbing the product reference bundle in the description below and you can also support by getting a Vogbot NFT on OpenSea where you also get a free animated fashion NFT for every piece bought. All this information can be found in the description below.